All right, folks, welcome back. Welcome back to another gear making tutorial. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how I made this big bait rod, musky rod, swim bait rod, whatever you wanna call it. I finished this up a couple days ago. And we're gonna start this video with me just going through the basic components of this build here. And we'll start with a blank here. This is a mud hole custom tackle. This is an eight foot, six inch, extra heavy. It'll throw up to an eight ounce lure. This unfortunately is now a discontinued blank. They do have a nine foot that is close to what this blank is, but they don't have the eight six anymore. And these grips are just standard grips, nothing fancy with them. This is a win butt cap. Moving up to the reel seat. This is a Fuji heavy duty reel seat. And I hand painted that. And I show how I painted that reel seat once we get going with the build here. And moving up, we have an aluminum winding check and all my guides are Fuji guides, all the way from this first guide, all the way up to the tip top. And I'll go over what sizes that I used a little later on in the build. And right now I have it paired with a uh, Tranks 300 HG. And I'm really excited to have a big bait rod. I've wanted to beef my rods up a little bit the past couple of years. I wanna be able to throw some bigger swim baits for uh, pike and bass. And uh, I'm glad I finally have one. I was gonna buy one, but I was like, oh, I could probably make one. And I think it came out pretty good. So we're gonna get right into the build. We're gonna start where I started the uh, painting process on this reel seat. And uh, we're gonna get going guys, we're gonna get right into it. First thing with this reel seat is we're gonna tape off that Fuji logo so it doesn't get paint on it. Peel this off nice and easy. Now we're just gonna take a little bit of sandpaper, give the entire reel seat a little bit of a scuff so the primer adheres to it a little better. Now we're ready for some primer. All right, here we go. Nice even coat. All right, so I put the second coat on off camera the exact same way I did the first coat. And now we're gonna hit it with the fluorescent yellow. All right, here we go. There's the first coat. So I'm gonna let this dry. I'll probably hit it with a heat gun here in a minute. Then we'll hit it with another two coats and then put the top coat on. All right, there we go. It looks good. Nice even coverage. Just gonna let this cure for about 30 minutes. Then we're gonna get our top coat on it. And there we have our paint. It's all dried up, secured. I let it cure for about a half hour. Now we're gonna put some UV cure resin on it. I'm gonna use Solar Res. This is their thick stuff. And this stuff is thick. It goes on thick, but it applies pretty good. So I'm just going to try to do nice, even pressure. I want this to be nice and durable. I want to protect that paint. All right, folks. Um, I just had a SD card error. I'm not sure why. I just painted this on the entire reel seat here. And what I'm doing is just spinning it. Um, this stuff is thick, so it takes a little longer to level out than some of the thinner stuff does. So I'm just rotating this just to make sure that has ample time to flatten out and level out. And once I think it's good, we're gonna bring it out in the sun and we're gonna cure it. We are heading outside, get some full sun. We're gonna set this. And all it takes is a couple seconds for the initial set. And uh, I'm gonna rotate it for another minute or two for the final set. And we'll be golden to move on to the next part of the project. All right guys, first step is uh, we're gonna find the spine of this rod. And I've already gone ahead and put some tape on it that represents a spine. So watch the tape here. And how you find the spine is you flex your rod, find out where most of the rod's bending, and you twist your rod. So I'm gonna use this hand down here and I'm gonna twist the blank. So we're gonna load it, twist it, and you can see that tape snaps down. I'm gonna load again, twist, and it snaps down. That actually weren't a good one. I'm gonna load, twist, and it snaps down. So my guide train is gonna go the direction of where this tape is pointing. So while this is under load, this is where the raw is gonna be most stable. So my guide, so my guides are gonna go on this side of the blank here. And now we're just gonna mark a white line in the direction of where this tape is pointing. This just gives us another reference in case we have to take that tape off. We have some China marker here that'll give us that same reference. And here we have our components 
just kind of mock fitted here and I've already went ahead and marked with a china marker where everything needs to line up. So now what we're gonna do is uh, take all these off. I'm gonna scuff up the blank where all these components go just to make sure we get a good grab and then we're gonna get everything epoxied up. So the next step is we're gonna scuff up this rod blank. This section here, I don't wanna touch right now um, because this is the open section. Um, everything, everything except this section, I'm gonna scuff up. And if you guys can't see them, I'm just going to be running on my China marker lines here. And just with some fine grit sandpaper, I'm just going to do a light scuff. And same here. That's where the real seat's going to be. And this is where the handle's going to be. Okay, we're all scuffed up. I don't know if you can see them scuffs. Just enough of that epoxy to grab onto. And uh, now we're going to get the epoxy mixed up and get our components on. And for the epoxy that we're going to use, we're going to use this Pro Paste. This stuff is uh, pretty good, stirable. It takes about an hour, hour and a half to fully cure. And what this suggests is that you do a 50-50 mix. So I'm just going to do a rough 50-50. All right, and the side B, again, just a rough 50-50. You can see that's a rough 50-50. I've never had a problem just doing a rough measurement. And the manufacturer actually just says a rough measurement. So now we're just gonna mix this thoroughly for a couple minutes and start dropping our components on. I'm just gonna take some on this disposable paintbrush. And I'm gonna get plenty of this on there. I wanna make sure we get a good grab. And we're gonna get some inside here. I want a little more on this rim here. All right, that looks good, feels good. It's gonna clean up some of this excess. And now we're gonna get this next uh, section here. This is the, this is where the rear grip is gonna go. Okay, now we're gonna slide the rear grip on. And I'm going to twist this as I go up, just to make sure that spreads around. I don't, I don't want to push up too hard, so I push my cap off, which I'm not. I'm just going to take a rag with some alcohol, and I'm going to clean up that excess glue. It's easier to get it off now than it is after it dries. Now we're moving up to the next grip section. Same thing, a little bit of a squeegee going, which is okay. Same thing, we're just giving this a nice spin, making sure we're getting a nice even coat. And that's where we're gonna stop right there. Clean up the excess. And now we're winding on our arbors. I already pre-made these, and uh, it just allows me at this stage to crank these on pretty quick and get my real seat on. Just gonna do one quick verification. All right, just doing a quick double check, and that's fine. And you want to check your reel seat. You probably can't see it, but there's a bunch of, but there's a bunch of grooves in there. If you look at your reel seat and it's completely smooth, you want to try to score some lines in there just to make sure the epoxy has something to connect to. Because if it's just smooth in there under pressure, your reel seat can twist. These already have pre-made grooves, so I don't have to mess with it. And we're going to make sure we get a bunch of epoxy in here. All right, let's see how that looks. It feels good. I like how that feels. Just going to rotate this around a few. I like that. That's nice and snug, just how I want it. All right, winding check. To top this section off. All right, next thing. It's kind of hard to show you guys, so I'll just show you through this way. Again, my reel's going to be sitting here, and the reel seat's got to line up with the tape down here. 
also the white lines that I drew because that's where the uh, spine of the rod is. So just double checking. That looks good. Looking from a couple different angles. And now we just got to wait for everything to harden up and we'll get the guides on. All right, guys. It's a little later in the afternoon and uh, everything's all set up. This thing's completely uh, set up and, and ready to put the guides on. Everything looks good. Real seat looks good. That works fine. No problem. And the last thing we have to do is just put the guides on. And I've already gone ahead off camera and marked where my guides are going to go. I use the guide space and chart from the manufacturer, which really makes it nice and easy. It really cuts the uh, guessing game down. And this is what we have for our guide train. We have 10 guides plus our tip top. We're starting with a 16, a 12, four 10s, four eights, and we're going down to an eight tip top. And next thing we gotta do is grind these feet down on all these. I'll show you guys one, then I'll finish the rest off camera. Okay, we're gonna cut that step down a little bit on each one of these. I'm just gonna take a Dremel tool and I'm gonna give this a light grind so we get a nice even step coming up. These are already pre-ground a little bit, but it's not enough to get a nice clean jump up. There, just like that. I don't know if you can see it. GoPros, they tend to not pick up detail that well. But we're gonna do both sides. And there you have it, there's both parts of the leg. And I'm gonna do the rest of these, and we'll catch back up with you when I put my first guide on. All right, here we go. We're gonna get started. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut a little tag end. I'm gonna set this off to the side. We're gonna come back to that a little later. And we're gonna start this wrap with our tag end going up the blank and I'm gonna tape it off. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna wrap down this way. And where this is the first guide and it's the biggest guide, I'm going to give about, we're gonna leave a little more than a quarter inch between the bottom of the foot and the thread and we're going to continue upwards and this is our tag end wrap and we're now wrapping over our tag end which is going to lock that in and we're just going to continue up okay so we're a good few wraps in and i'm just going to neaten these up as i go it's a little easier to neat them up now than to do it when you've completely finished it so i'm going to leave that and take this tag end And I'm going to give that a pull, and we're going to cut it with our razor blade. I'm going to pull tension on it, and I'm just going to give a quick cut there. You barely have to touch it, and it cuts it no problem. So now we're just going to wind up. Nothing fancy now until we hit the guide foot. Stuff there that I don't want. I don't know where that came from. You can tell I'm going to have to put a little piece of tape on because it's still wanting to float a little bit. So if we taper that good enough with our Dremel, we should be able to walk right up onto that guide foot, no problem. Which we are. And I'm just going to keep this going. Okay, we're looking good. All right, I'm far up enough now that I can take this tape off. So I'm going to hold the guide foot. I'm going to peel that tape off. And we're going to continue the rest of the way up. Now this is where this tag end of thread comes in. We're gonna make our locking wrap up here so we don't have to tie any knots. What I do is just create a loop. This is gonna go up against the thread, just like this. And we're gonna wrap up onto that. And you'll see what that's for in just a minute. And again, we want five to eight wraps. I'm gonna get as many as I can right here. All right, so now I'm gonna block the threads here. I'm going to take my razor blade, I'm going to trim that, I'm going to put this tag end through this loop we just wrapped on, I'm going to hold the tag end tight, I'm going to grab these two tag ends, I'm going to pull that loop tight, and we're going to pull the thread under them eight wraps or so that we made, just like that, and there's our lock and wrap. I'm going to leave this on there just in case I need to tighten stuff up later. It'll be easier to tighten this with a tag end. 
versus if I cut it, I'd have to go through and completely redo it. And now you should be able to take this tape off and we're gonna repeat the same thing on this guide foot. And there's our first guide, looks great. Everything's nice and even. Now I just have to do that nine more times, then we'll put the tip top on. All right guys, it is the next morning. All the guides are on. I had to finish them out here in the kitchen because I didn't have enough room in my little room there to uh, get all the guides on comfortably. So I had to move out here and, and the last guide is the uh, tip top and I'll show you guys how I'm gonna put that on. And for your tip top, you're gonna need your tip top obviously. I already ground that foot down. You're gonna need tip top adhesive and you're gonna need some type of heat source to melt this down. And what I do is I melt this, I get it all nice and runny. And what I'm gonna do is just try to get some in my tip top there. Now I'm gonna get some on my blank. Now I'm gonna heat my guide up a little bit. You don't need to heat your guide up much. This stuff melts at a really low temp. I'm just gonna get that started. Now I'm gonna warm both up. Slide that on. Clean this excess off. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check for the alignment and we actually landed pretty darn good on that first one. If you noticed, you were off center. You could just heat your tube up and slide it into place, but I don't have to for this one. That landed fine. And last thing is we're gonna put a thread wrap on that. And now we're gonna finish by laying a little bit of paint right here in the midsection. And I'm gonna start just by giving this a light score with some fine grit sandpaper, just so the primer has something to stick to. So as you guys can see off camera, I masked off my handles here and uh, we're going to get this paint down and now we're going to lay down our sealer. I'm going to do two coats of this sealer white and then we're going to get our color on. And now we just have to wait about a half hour before we can put our fluorescent yellow on. Alright, now we gotta wait about another half hour. I wanna put our top coat on. Alright guys, unfortunately my audio stopped working at this point of the build, but thankfully we're almost done. And as you can see, I am uh, putting my channel name. I also put the rod length, the action, and the size lure that I could throw on this rod. And once the paint marker was dried, I brought it out in the kitchen and I put the top coat onto this section here and onto the guides. All right, so as you can see, we have the rod and my rod turner now, and I'm getting ready to put the thread finish on the thread wraps. And that was the Solares UV Cure Resin. It's their Flex Formula. FYI, this is more or less a trial run with this stuff. I used this same resin on an ice fishing rod. I did this past winter, and it held up good. So I wanted to try it on this bigger rod. So this is more or less a trial. If you're not comfortable using this stuff, I used to use the uh, Pro Coat the two-part mix and that stuff works awesome but you have to turn it for eight hours and uh, I just wanted to see if I could eliminate that step by using this UV cure resin so I'm taking a little bit of a risk trying it on this rod but say worst case scenario if it didn't turn out well I could just take the guides off and rewrap them and use a pro coat so FYI this is just a trial I will check back in in a couple months and uh, do a quick video on how this stuff is held up but for right now it's just a trial but as you can see, I'm just applying it to the thread wraps here, just giving, just giving it nice even coverage. And once I've got a nice even coat and everything is settled, I hit it real quick with my UV light just to give it a light set. And once I had everything light set, I then brought it out in full sunlight and left it facing the sun for about five minutes each side. I did four quarters. And after that, it was completely solid and ready to fish. All right, folks, here we go. 
here it is all done I'm out here on the river trying to catch some stripers with it I'm waiting for high tide I have it paired with a Shimano Tranks 300 HG it's a pretty mean reel and I have 65 pound power pro on it I have just a junk swim bait I had laying around and uh, came out pretty good came out awesome it, uh, it's been casting really well it's nice and comfortable the only thing I have to do is just take up a little bit of wobble in the reel seat there. It's very minor, but it's enough that I can feel it clicking around. But other than that, I think it came out great. I think it looks good. Already getting it uh, muddied up and scarred up a little bit. And this thing casts really well. I really like that moderate fast action. It allows me to really load up on that rod and bomb the swim bait out there. But so far, it's just a really comfortable rod. So next thing is, I just got to tie into a fish with it. But uh, we're going to wrap it up there, guys. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.